I'm not even gonna try it this time. Episode 41, Wayne's World and Kelly. Remember when I tried What's to up, do before and I was trying to do 41? Look, I did it. I, I, last time with 40, I had a heck of a time trying to do a zero. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. What's going on? You know, I, I, I'm glad you asked what's going on because I was going to say the viewers don't know what's all going on behind the scenes of all it takes to make this happen. Now I understand why most podcasts last less than three episodes. Because there's a lot of challenges going on. You try to get the right camera angles. You got all the people doing hair and makeup. Well, I'm sorry, makeup and uh, wardrobe and setting up the sets. You know, we're doing multiple sets for each show. We got three camera angles. We only use one of them, though, because we don't want to show off all that stuff. And then you have your guest issues. So um, we've got our guest on, and he's trying to get to the location. He got stuck in traffic. And now he's at the gate. Of a, of a property because he's in the business and they won't let him through the gate. Send me a picture of the woman just going, looking at him. I go, let him in. So we're going to see if he hops on the next couple minutes. So be one of those ones where we might have a guest, we might not. But one thing I've always noticed, except for last week, you are never at a loss for words. Correct. <laughs> except for last week. You were unbelievable. And we haven't talked about it. And I mean, I, I, other right. than the fact you said, well, you know, y'all had a pretty good flow going. So you just sat there and watched. Right. Well, I think sometimes when you're recognizing greatness, you keep your mouth shut, right? <laughs> she was amazing. I, I you know, you, you had told me about her and I finally had met her up in Orlando and then saw her again a couple uh, the next day in, or, um, in Tampa. But wow, I, it's amazing the wealth of knowledge and experience that people have. And, um, you know, and then you just never know, you know, what the person's going to be like. But look at this. How exciting is this? He's trying to come in. He's trying to come in. We might have our super special guest, probably maybe the most handsome guest we've ever had. And there he is. Look at that. He's dressed really nice, too. Now he has to unmute himself. We're so close to being there. Actually, I don't think that's a real picture. That's his uh, his Zoom picture. And there he is. Yeah, I don't even have him on yet. I can't oh, no, so it really see is him. him. It really is. Now, if he could just unmute himself, that is the one, the only ace, Mark Sergio of Brown and Brown Insurance. And we're still trying to unmute. You know, this is how he is on the golf course. He just gets up there. He doesn't say much, but he just hits the most perfect shots you've ever seen. And in business, he's the same way, representing one of the best companies in the country based out of Florida, which is very exciting, Brown and Brown. But he's still trying to unmute. It's, Do you know why I don't have his picture, Kel? I wonder why. So I'm having technical oh. issues on my end. That's weird. I have a much better phone than you. Uh, I mean, a much better um, um, laptop. Hmm. <laughs> he, he just sent me a text note that he can't, um, <laughs> I can't repeat. <laughs> oh, it's, what the heck <laughs> is what he said. Because he can't get his stupid phone to unmute. So that was Mark Sergio of Brown and Brown Insurance. Um and he's going to try again. This is exciting. I mean, this is once I was talking about behind the scenes stuff. This is the real behind the scenes real stuff time. that we're talking about. This is exciting. I, I, he's such a great guy. I really want to be able to uh, share him with the people that don't know him, although he's pretty well known. I think he has audio. There he is. I think he has audio. He's just trying to zap. I know it's still muted. Dog, got it. Wow. Yeah, we might have to carry the show. Well, I'm going to make you carry the show. Me? It's a, it's a great visual, though. He's like, wait, wait, one minute. <laughs> you know, I, you know, just last week I had a meeting with board members along with uh, James LaGreca, my my business partner. And I thought I was unmuted and I was talking, but they couldn't hear me. I finally got myself unmuted and... uh I'm not sure if they were happy about it. No, it was a really great meeting with great clients. But uh, on the using your phone, it's much more difficult to unmute than it is when you're sitting on a laptop. Yeah, and but you, I've always used my phone until I use my the pad, and uh, I never had a problem before seeing everybody. So I don't know what the deal is, but we'll go with it. I just let somebody else in. I don't even know who it is. It still could be him. 
is it, is it working? It's is working. It, is it working? <laughs> well, this is great. We're, now oh. we're, we have a four four cameras going. Your last oh one's still going. Gosh. So can you hear us? I can, I you can guys have no idea what I... I can Can you guys hear me? We hear, we can, Oh, wow. We can hear you can now. You hear we're in. How you doing, brother? Wow. Thank you. We're in. It's been a stressful day. Stressful morning. Uh, but I'm good. I'm here. I'm super excited. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Ah oh, man. Yeah, his phone's kind of choppy. What's wrong? We're having trouble hearing you, brother. My phone's choppy? Uh, all right, let me see if I go outside. We can pull this off. Uh, you know, we you're will. a sharp dresser. I <clears throat> Thank you. Like well, I'm just wearing my regular shirt, but appreciate that. Yeah, Wayne, Wayne, is, Wayne is looking good. The blue, you, like, sir. really suits your eyes. Thank you. Well. I appreciate that. Yeah. Now you're gonna make me sweat. I'm gonna be outside. Hopefully, you guys can hear me better now, though. We, yeah, we can hear you right now. Now the sun is shining. My forehead is glistening. We're good. Good. So one thing I got to say is, I always notice that you bald guys always stick together. I'm sorry, follically whoa, whoa, challenged. Whoa. Listen, I'm not on Wayne's level yet, but I'm I'm headed there. You are headed there. <laughs> headed no pun there. intended. <laughs> uh, I, you know, one thing, on doing? camera, I look like I'm. I have more of a challenge than I do because that's a thick head of hair this old guy's got. So uh, you've got the salt and pepper look going pretty well, you know. Yeah. Years ago, my sister asked me, "Was I putting the salt in?" I'm like, "What is wrong with you? Why? Who would? Who would do that?" <laughs> <laughs> I got it. I I got to tell you from from uh, from all of us being dads on here, I need to give you a lot of credit, Mark, for the choice of your son's name, Maverick. That is alpha all the way. And I love it. Okay. That That's is, a great that name. is, thank you. Thank you. That is, that is a great name. I appreciate it. I, I love, I love the name. He's got, a, he's got a lot to, you know, to live up to. He's going to have to be a fighter pilot, you know, so. Or we'll a see. fireman or a fireman, right? Or. Or a fireman. Or. Or. A fireman, dad. Yes. Or. The Callaway driver, Callaway, one of our sponsors, has a driver called Maverick. They do. Right they one. do. I I love that driver, too. It's really good. It really doesn't help you, though, if you're going to hit it to the left or right. I mean, it's just uh, you get up there and hit it and you hope, you know. Right. So so let's just go ahead and let's let's just go ahead and talk about that. So it was last oh, year. You're with our good uh, Ben Friedman, who owns City Quiet ben. Class. Um, you guys are Switched, playing yeah. in a golf tournament, and, and and what happened? He invited me to uh, the Boca Raton Resort, uh, the member guest, and I think it was on hole six. We only had one or two drinks by that time, so I had the a little swing loop going. It was a par three, 115 yards, short, front tuck pin, and you know, when I hit it, I was like, oh my gosh, I hit it too far. I didn't, I've never played the course before. So when I hit it, I thought I hit a bad shot. I walked away, and apparently there's a shelf where the ball landed and the ball was trickling backwards. And as it was coming down, you hear Ben just screaming, oh, my God, oh, my God. No and way. I turn, I, I turn around, I'm like, oh, my God, it's going in, and it dropped in. and Dude. Every, everybody, everybody was going nuts. Um, yeah. the other, the other people on the other, the, the other hole were going nuts. And then, um, that was probably the last moment I remember. Cause then Ben fed me a thousand transfusions and, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's one of those <laughs> days know, where like, it's allowed. Ben, ben like, I mean, I'm telling you what, yeah, I haven't no, been you, drunk in probably 17 years where I've been, you know, intoxicated. I get a hole in one right. buddy, all bets are off. I might do some heroin. No, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> wow wow no, yeah dude. yeah yeah well that's probably not gonna happen but <laughs> yeah the whole in one or the heroin <laughs> yeah well the you heroin can't see sure. me golf uh, yeah <laughs> oh man so it was a, it was an uh, unbelievable moment ben 
was a great host. He, uh, he ended up getting me, uh, the, uh, the ball and he got me a picture framed of, of the whole one. So that was a really cool memory that I have that's hanging up actually in Maverick's room. So he's, awesome. uh, yep. yep. Something Congratulations, sir. Love it. Thank you. Now, Thank you guys. You are a great golfer. And I don't want to stick on golf too much. People are going to go, he does work for Brown and Brown insurance, but, but he is a, he's a great golfer as he is a businessman. So, um, Tiger Woods' son recently said to his dad, he says, I want to beat you by the time I'm 14 years old. How old do you have this Maverick shown any signs yet? How old do you think it's going to be? Because <laughs> you're, you're, you're tough to beat. Yeah. I have to worry about my oldest I have to worry about my oldest daughter, Ivy. She's five years old, and I don't know if you've seen her swing yet, but she's uh, she's got a heck of a swing on her, especially in heels. So, I don't know. <laughs> so, does, know. It, so does Kelly. I love him. Yeah. Heels. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that's the new, that's the new look, you know, skinny jeans and heels. <laughs> Listen, at six one, I don't need heels. Little Wayne. Oh, okay. Okay. Pookie. It, but, it still um, is a visual that I don't mind. So let me ask you this. How much do you think golf is incorporated into your, into your business model? A ton really. Um, you know, it's, it's not often where you can get somebody four hours on a golf course, five hours sometimes, and you just get to connect with them one-on-one. Um, I'll be, I, I really don't like to talk business at all when I'm on the golf course. It's just, right, right. let's connect, let's connect with the yep. other person and really see what this person is like. Because, you know, all types of business, really, it's all about connecting with somebody on a deeper level, uh, making that connection and and really trying to find a true common friendship to make things work because you can work with so many different people in this world. And if you can't really connect with them on an, another level, other than business, it's why do business with that type of person? So, so true. Uh, so true, dude. Yep. Mark yeah. McCormick said so, the same thing. Yeah. yeah. I think Mark McCormick would know too. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, he, he, he was, he was originally was the manager for Arnold Palmer. And he wrote the book, yep. but they don't teach at Harvard Business School, and they still don't teach at Harvard Business School. But it's funny that you yeah. mentioned that. Peter Lefrancais, who is an executive vice president for hit contracting up in Northern Virginia, they're like, I don't know, a $7 billion a year company. And Peter and I became friends, and a lot of other people at hit. Like, like you, you, you golf with your clients, we're out golfing at an event. And then we had, I don't know, a year later, we had another event, and it was a good um, another good client of mine who ran a bunch of hotels from the Mississippi East. And we're on the first hole. And before we even hit the first ball, Peter says to uh, Jeffrey, my my client, he goes, so what kind of business can we do together? And I'm like, dude, slow Whoa. down. And so Jeffrey Whoa. pulls me aside and he goes, what's wrong with this guy? I mean, good Lord. I said, listen, I said, listen, he's from New York. <laughs> I said, you know, break, Peter's yeah. a great guy. He really is. He knows his stuff. He's got a great company. Sometimes he's a little bit too much business, but you're hundred percent right. We go out and when we golf, you're a great golfer. I'm an, not a very good golfer at all, but we do get to enjoy connecting with people without talking about business. And then, but we right, do right. get to know each other are. And I mean, I don't know how it is for you, for, for you, you. People have to get to know me better because they just see how great of a golfer you are. And then it's just, they just start saying, here, write all of our insurance, have your team take care of us. <laughs> I wish it was that easy. I with, wish me, it they, right easy. with me, they always go, gee, but, I hope your company's better than the way you play golf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, I, uh, your company is definitely way better than you play golf. That's one. Um, <laughs> but, um, but it's true, you know, going out there and playing golf, you, you get to have fun. You, you get to take the, the pressure of actual business out, business side of things out of it and, and really just get to learn about the other person who you're playing with. I think that's the most important thing. Get to know somebody and really get to know them, right? Um, and then business will come later. And, and uh, if you can't talk to somebody on a human level, you're not going to be able to talk to them on a business level. So that's kind of the way, that's the approach that I take. Absolutely. So I got, a, I got a question. I got a question for both of you. So Mark, you, you've actually brought up an interesting point um, I know sometimes you look at the demographics regarding, you know, the millennials and they, they, they don't golf like our generation has and was brought up. And, and now you talk a lot about the zoom calls about people trying to connect that way. 
what what's another good alternative other than the, the dinner or the lunch to build relationships with people that aren't on the golf course? That's a great question. I mean, I think that's something that you have to figure out what the other person that you're trying to connect with, what are they into? Right. Maybe they're not, in, maybe they're not into golf or lunches and maybe it's breakfast. Um, right. Or, you know, you just have to figure out and try. That's the beauty of this. You have to figure out what each individual is kind of into and then morph into that. You know, if they, if they want to go play racquetball, you got to go play racquetball. Or if they just want to go to have a coffee at Starbucks, then you go have coffee at Starbucks and then you get to know them in their element. You never want to try to push somebody who's going to be uncomfortable going to play golf because that's the worst thing if they're going to be embarrassed and you right. don't want somebody being you don't want somebody being embarrassed and frustrated for four and a half hours that's the worst right. thing you could have happen do you know what i mean so yeah. it's just trying it's just learning a little bit about somebody and, and 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 going to do what they want to do um but when it comes to business i i think it's either breakfast um and go grab some breakfast or or really it's just figuring out exactly what it is that they want to do and and do that so kind of switching channels a little bit because you're, you know, and it's, it's kind of funny that Wayne said our generation, you're not in our generation, you know, love you like a brother, but you're, you're the age of a son for me. So, <laughs> so listen, but, I, I did, I did have my 39th birthday just a couple of days ago. So I'm getting up there now. Well, I just had my 60th. So once again, different generation and Wayne's <laughs> right behind me, but um, you know, we all get along. That's and I love the connections that, I remember I was golfing with 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 Ben and and Errol and my partner no oh and and, and I'm um, over at DSS condo Mike uh, Poe right and it was right. a weird realization it was a couple years ago and they're talking about they were comparing ages and kids and they they all had two kids um, I think they all have boys or you have two boys and a girl but they were all under forty and I was a you know a couple years from sixty. And I came to the realization I'm hanging out with these nice guys that they all three could be my sons. You know, you're going to get there one day. But so the transition I would ask is, so now we're like Wayne's sons in college. My daughter's graduated and has started a family. You have just started a family. You got the you, the two daughters and then you had your son. How's how's the, the, the work-life balance? And, and you have a beautiful wife that you got to keep happy as well. How How's How's all that? Because your life changed a lot in the last 10 years. <laughs> yeah, uh, really in the last five and a half years. Um, yeah. Work-life balance is obviously always, I think that's the hardest thing for anybody is work-life balance. How to, you know, make your family happy and still do your job. Um, you know, I mean, I'm in a, I'm in a difficult situation. You know, my, my son's six months, my middle daughter's 22 months. So, we're in the diaper sleeping phase, trying to figure out, you know, who's going to do the night shift between my wife and I, my wife is great. You know, she stays home and she's a, she crushes it. Right. But there's those nights where she needs to break and it's trying to appease her. You know, I was up three o'clock this morning. She was up at 12 o'clock, you know, it's just, a balance it's difficult it's really difficult i'm still trying to figure it out figuring it out right now um but then we also to appease my wife you know we we have to do date nights or we go on like little you know we did a staycation this past weekend we went to charleston about a month ago so we try to do some things like every now and then to try to rekindle our relationship um and uh, yeah so that's kind of how i've been just juggling things a little bit how did she feel about your hole in one? Uh, was it the same as do we, have, do we, do we have to go back to this? What well, did she care? Know, so I mean, no, she 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 did not care one bit. <laughs> okay. Let me let me let me you know so that is so, so she, candid. She didn't care. And only thing she cared about was daddy coming home and cooking dinner for everybody, like right. I said I was going to do. And I didn't get to do that because I had a couple too many drinks and I was no. late. So yeah, she didn't care. She was pretty, she was quite frustrated actually. Um, so yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I got a comment. I got a comment on that. That's so funny. Cause the mistake I made early on in my career, I think I was probably your age. I remember 
working a hurricane in Florida and having clients out on the golf course. And I actually made the mistake of calling my wife right after the round was done, telling her, you know, how much fun I had and wow, we made such a great connection and it's going to lead to this, that, and the other thing. And there was like dead silence on the other end of the phone. And she said, when, I right, right. What did she say? You, you, you blanked out. We didn't get that recorded. What yeah, did you say? You, yeah. I didn't hear you. What'd you say? Oh, do you, well, I was, I, were you cursing? I, I Is that work? why you blanked out? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I, 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 I the guys just, in the control I, booth cut out whatever you said. What'd you say? Yeah. My, my wife said, when are you coming home? She didn't <laughs> care about any business that was going on the golf course. That's all she said after like a 10 second pause. that felt like 10 minutes. When are you coming home? So lesson learned, no matter <laughs> yeah. what explanation that you're going to give them regarding, Hey, this is an integral part of how I build up relationships that's the part where she goes on mute. Right. My, my wife is, my wife is not a golfer at all. And she's like, right. you only got, you only got one today. I was like, um, babe, this is like a once in a lifetime thing. She's like, all right, cool. Tell me when you get another one. <laughs> yeah. Right. Dude. God, that's so yeah. true, man. Yeah, yeah. exactly. All right, get um, home and get home, and, get home and cook me this dinner now. <laughs> right. R yeah. Now. Yeah. There's a regional for first service. And he hit a hole in one on a par four with a client that a woman client that never golfed before. Wow. And it's like the third hole. It's a short par four. He crushes it, goes in the hole. You know, everyone's going nuts. And a couple holes later, she's like, I can't believe you hadn't gotten another one. So <laughs> you gave me a flashback to that great story. But, uh, <laughs> Man. Like, you know, I'm still waiting. I hit one in the water once, I, I am, and then I yeah. teed up and hit it in a hole. So I've had a par three, where teed a ball. The worst, the the wor yeah, it's, the worst, the worst would be hitting it in the water, and your next tee shot is going into the hole. That would be the absolute worst. I did do that with my oh, ex wife who was pregnant at the time, watching, and so I had a witness. But it, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was weird. It was definitely. But the what was crazy was when I heard about your hole in one, it was. As, as an avid, lousy golfer, I was so freaking excited. It's almost like I had it, you know? I know. Right, yeah, that's awesome. Our perspective that. as golfers <laughs> versus others. My father was a scratch golfer for years, won tons of tournaments, could have been on the tour back in the 40s and the 50s, right? Never had a hole-in-one. His father started playing in his 50s, had two hole-in-ones. My dad yeah, said, go figure. Dad, you know, my grandfather, not so good, but he has two hole-in-ones. So I, that shows – that I got a chance. It it does. It does. <laughs> hey, hey, Mark, tell us about the Brown and Brown empire. Oh yeah, oh, man. Well, Brown and Brown is a, is in a great organization. I have been with the company for now five and a half years. We're a publicly traded company and the S and P 500. Um, my office is in Fort Lauderdale. Um, I sp specifically target habitational uh, condominium, high rises. Um, I'm actually at one now in the, in Miami, uh, doing a new presentation. Uh, but with Brown and Brown, you know, we, we have about 200 people in our office in Fort Lauderdale. And I would say that we have one of the best teams in the whole entire country, um, in any organization, you know, I come from a firefighting background, right. And everything was always about the team. Uh, yep. two in, two out, you always have your team with you. Um, it's kind of, it's the same situation here. I have a great team within our condo department. Um, I'm actually waiting for Jordan Knowles here, who's going to help me uh, present uh, to this new, uh, new business here. We're uh, in Miami. Uh, but yeah, you know, so we're all about the team approach. Um, I think whenever you do business, you always want to have a great team to surround your core, right? You know, you can't, if you think about basketball, you have LeBron James, he can't do it all by himself. And we've seen that before, even last night, right? He, he didn't have his team dialed in and he wasn't able to succeed. Same thing with all business. You have to have a good team. You have to have a good service. You have to have a good back end. I mean, it's, there's so much to it, but Brown and Brown, in my opinion, are, you know, we're top notch tier uh, organization and uh, 
this is what we do. We specialize in the condo, condo business in our Fort Lauderdale office, but we do specialize in construction, manufacturing, distributing. So we have so many different sectors within our organization. And um, yeah, you know, I, I, it's awesome to be part of this team. Well, and obviously your success has been Beach. predicated on the ability of your team. You're based out of Daytona yeah, Beach, which is another based Florida out of city. Daytona Beach. Yeah. And speaking of Daytona Beach, our today's new sponsor is Crest. I really can't get a good picture of it, but Crest Toothpaste, one of our new sponsors. Yeah, it's awesome. So that's awesome. So you do know that we so have fake a, sponsors so, every week. So that's yes, our new fake one. I do. Because I, you know nothing's more important than brushing your teeth several times a day when you're in our business, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Nice little <laughs> plug in there. Oh my God. So I know you got to go off to your meeting. I actually have a client blowing up my phone. The one I was talking about, I was talking um, to uh, last week. He's calling me up. I think he wants to say, hey, congratulations. We want to go ahead and contract with you guys. <laughs> so we have to go sign oh, off and go do some work. Wayne's in um, Dallas, Texas at the CAI National Convention. Oh, uh, nice. Yeah. I think Ben's going to be there too, right? Yeah, Ben's flying out and a bunch of our other friends. But the rest of us going to hold down the uh, paradise. So. Hey. Yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, catching up with Ben here, definitely. So um, I'll definitely tell him that uh, that you fellas both said hi. Definitely. Tell him we love I will. him. Yeah. So, I will. We, uh, and I don't know if Dawn, the paving lady, Miller's going to be there or not. Oh, hi, hi Dawn. If she is, I'll definitely tell her hello. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here's Jordan with a little cameo. Little cameo. <laughs> well, Jordan Knowles, ladies and gentlemen, that was Jordan Knowles. Also another great golfer that – just blows me away every time he hits it. So, <laughs> all right, well, you guys, thanks so much. Good for your luck time. in your meeting. Good luck. It's I appreciate nice talking it. to you, Mark. Take it Absolutely. easy. Absolutely. Thanks. Thanks for you. Have a great day, you guys. Take care, all brother. Right. See you, fellas. Close Bye. that deal.